What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm really excited because I'm bringing you guys one of my favorite decks of all time and that is Dino but not just any Dino build. This is building on a budget Dino where we aim to build competitive decks for less than a hundred dollars so that this way you guys can be competitive, be successful and not have to spend a ton of money on this game and Dino with its brand new reprints and wild survivors is absolutely affordable and such a powerful deck to play. Now if you guys enjoyed this series and just anything else you guys see here on the channel make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one we upload five days a week here on the channel deck profiles combo videos dual replays we do five shorts a week so minimum you guys are going to get five videos a week but you guys can get up to 10 videos a week which is just absolutely insane so make sure you guys subscribe if you guys haven't already i'm excited to get right into it so with that let's get right into the deck profile all right, so just before we get into the deck profile here, and as always with these building on a budget deck profiles, I really wanna show you guys that this is legit. The prices that I say and I put up on my thumbnails and whatnot, are legit so this is tcg player right here you guys can see it's 55 cards in the items and that means there's 40 cards in the main deck 15 cards in the extra deck including shipping so i'm not one of those guys that does the thing where it's kind of like oh this deck's 30 dollars, but then you're not counting taxes you're not counting shipping this is all in it's going to come to 44 dollars and 21 cents over here and you guys are going to see it's everything just because wild survivors came out this deck is now so affordable and you can play it at a competitive level 44 dollars 55 cards main deck and extra deck let's get right into it so to get started with the deck profile here i will say that at first glance you guys are going to see over here we're actually not playing any of the new support from wild survivors and that's because at a budget level you really don't want to be i think ground xeno alone is just really expensive and there's no reason to play the other cards without ground xeno so i think this dino build is actually the best way to play it in this budget where it's just so so affordable and you guys can still play competitively with this which is absolutely crazy right so we're playing three soul eating ov raptor ov obviously being your best normal summon you have to be playing three of this three baby Sarasaurus. ov plus baby is just full combo all the time in my opinion one of the best two card combos in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh. so you have to be maxing out on these because you really want to see these they're going to help you combo of course and help you either otk or build boards which is really really crazy then we're playing two petite pteranodon i opted to play two instead of the one typically i like to play one in this build i decided to play two instead just because i feel like in a more budget build seeing a petite is actually still really powerful so that's why we're playing the two here we're playing two archosaur now arco plus baby is full combo as well but the reason we're not playing three archosaur is because archosaur only combos with baby unlike the other cards where like ov can combo with misc ov can combo with baby ov can combo with like so many different things versus archosaur can only combo specifically with baby so for that reason we're only playing two also you really most of the time just want to be pulling him out of your deck anyways through the miscellaneous so for that reason even if you draw one you still want to have one in deck and that's why we're playing two because we are playing the one miscellaneous which again its main purpose especially when you're going first and you're trying to combo is trying to get your archosaur on the field so that's why we're playing the one misc but misc is just so powerful in so many different ways like this card if it was at two or three you'd definitely be playing two or three but unfortunately it's just that one you still got to be playing the misc the misc is just absolutely insane card then we're playing two ultimate conduct tyranno in my opinion the best boss monster in all of Yu-Gi-Oh history this card summons itself out you guys can get access to this through pill this card is an otk enabler this card is a disruption it just does so many different things for you so ultimate conduct tyranno of course is a two of you don't want to play three because it can brick at three it does require a little bit of setup but when this card is on the field it's always going to be a threat to your opponent which is absolutely insane so that's why we want to be playing two ultimate conduct tyranno we're playing the one giant rex of course this is your extender of the deck and although yes this deck can go first i actually Actually believe this deck is always going to be better going second just being able to break boards and on top of that all of these combos are two card combos so drawing that sixth card just makes it all that more reliable to draw the two card combo and see the two card combo that you need so for that reason i do like playing the pancratops and the dogaran now while these two don't necessarily impact your two card combos what these cards let you do is go second and be able to break boards which is just so so powerful and like i said that's something this deck does really really well and dogaran is also a searchable kaiju through ov raptor which is kind of insane if you think about it so dogaran plus pancratops dogaran also has a really good place in the meta right now all kaijus do so that's why i really like the dogaran in the main deck then we're playing three fossil dig of course just more consistency the thing is with fossil dig is it replaces any other name so remember how i said earlier ov plus misc is combo ov plus baby is combo misc plus baby is combo 
Oracle plus baby is combo. Those, these are all two card combos, which is insane, right? So if you start your turn with like baby three hand traps on a fossil dig, well, that fossil dig can now be OV Raptor or that fossil dig can now be miscellaneous. And now you're going to be able to full combo anyways, right? So fossil dig is always going to replace the second name for you, which is really powerful. Then we're playing two double evolution pill. I think you really want to be playing two just because one drawing is not bad, but you also really always want to have one in deck so that you can resolve your Arcosaur. It's really important to be able to resolve Arcosaur. So for that reason, you have to always have one in deck. So drawing one, but then having one in the deck always at one point is always going to be good. And then we're playing three Lost World and the one Terraforming. Now Lost World, funny enough, is randomly good into Kostra. Putting a token on your opponent's side of the field is really, really powerful. On top of that, it also protects you from cards like Imperm, Veiler, and all these hand traps, even a lot of monster negates that your opponent might put up because it makes it so that your opponent can't target monsters in the field other than the token, right? And so that's really powerful because it is a form of protection for you as well. And on top of that, if the token were to be destroyed, you can protect the token, destroy a monster from your deck instead, and that's why you can destroy the baby Ceratosaurus or the Petite Pteranodon, which is just really, really powerful. So that's why I also like playing two Petite. Usually you'll go through one in your combo. So I like having the second one for like Lost World and whatnot. So yeah, three Lost World. I think Terraform and getting to Lost World is also really important. And then we are playing a small Scrap Engine. And that's because this card being a tuner over here, Scrap Raptor, is really, really important to some of your end boards that feature cards like Naturia Beast, which means you're going to be locking your opponent out of spell cards entirely, right? So we're playing two Scrap Raptor and one Scrap Chimera. Very, very small pack package, a lot of the time you're going to be wanting to pull the Raptor out of your deck with your baby Ceratosaurus. But the really cool thing about Raptor is Raptor plus Lost World is also combo, which is really nice. So it gives you another way to combo, which is really, really cool. Also, uh, Lost World plus Ovi can be combo as well, which is really nice. But yeah, Scrap Raptor plus Lost World is really important to combo. It's important in your other combos, pulling it out of your deck, making the Churia base and all that other stuff. And then the Chimera, of course, getting the extra Raptor on your side of the field, which means you can now link climb with it is very, very powerful. I really like this very small package. And then last Lastly, we're playing the one Nemesis Keystone. Keystone is insane because it's your level one that helps you get into Naturia Beast. And on top of that, it recycles your miscellaneous. So you're not just going to be resolving it once. If you're able to resolve Misk, activate your Keystone and then get Misk back into your deck. On top of that, once this card is in the graveyard, if you use this card because it's a non-dino for your double evolution pill, this card will add itself back to your hand from the banish zone on the end phase. So it's absolutely insane in that sense. And you guys can see that's that's it for essentially the dino engine and whatnot. And I don't wanna play the true kings and I'm gonna be honest with you, I thought the true kings were really cool. However, the problem with the true kings is it's really reliant on opening the babies and doing all these shenanigan combos. But the thing is, although it is really powerful, they don't really combo with much else other than the babies. So for that reason, I decided to go the keystone route and I think this route is one of the best ways to go. Then we're playing the one harpy's feather duster. Of course, again, I think this deck is best going second. And on top of that, you don't really have a lot of main deck outs to back row so i really like the harpy's feather duster in the main deck plus it's just a common fits into the budget it's really really powerful and then for the hand traps the really cool thing about these hand traps is all of them are now accessible as commons and very very affordable so we're playing three ash blossom three ghost ogre and three effect Veiler. they're just the cheapest hand traps that you guys can be playing right now droll and lockbird is another option that you guys can be playing instead of the effect Veiler, because droll and lockbird is insane this format droll and lockbird however even the commons i believe are three to four bucks so if you guys wanted to up the budget from 44 so let's say 50 or maybe 55 you guys would swap the effect failures for drolls and then this way you're still within like a 50 to 60 dollar budget and that's still really really powerful in this deck right so yeah for that reason i think you can swap the veilers for the drolls however to keep within the 44 dollar budget although technically the series is within a hundred dollars but yeah keeping it within 44 is crazy but again if you want to up it to 50 55 you guys can replace the veilers for drone lock words and then lastly we're playing the one called by the grave to protect yourself from hand traps which is also really important and this card is also just really powerful in general against a lot of different things so that's why we're playing the call by grave and that is 40 cards in the main deck right over here moving on to the extra deck we're playing two dolka dolka is one of your best cards that you can end your boards on it's two monster negates for you so it's just really really powerful one logia for the spell and trap negate is really really powerful as well it also can negate a summon which can kind of come in handy but most of the time you're going to be using it as a spell trap negate we're playing the one gallant granite this is important for your combo because this helps you get into your maturia beast and it helps you search your nemesis keystone the really cool thing about keystone is even if you draw it it's not a brick it's just one of those things that is searchable in this deck which is really powerful within its combo then we're playing the one baguska one tornado dragon these are just really powerful rank fours that you guys can make just utility cards depending on the matchup you're going into and then we're playing the one link karibo one secure gardener these two are really good even though you're playing so many hand traps when you don't really open hand traps or you don't have ways to get non-dinos in the graveyard these cards get the non-dinos in the graveyard if you guys don't know how it works is you can use arco to make link karibo and then use a link karibo to make secure gardener and now link karibo is a non-dino in the graveyard for you 
for your pill fodder. A lot of the time you won't really need it, but there are situations where it can come up. So it's really important to have. Then we're playing the one scrap over and of course for the scrap combos, one pentastag helps you OTK. It's really, really powerful because if a monster attacks a defense position monster, it does piercing damage. And then ultimate conductor Tyranno can book of moon all of your opponent's monsters. So it can be really powerful because it makes ultimate conductor Tyranno an OTK machine through a full board of monsters, which can be really, really powerful. Then we're playing the one Asa. The thing with this deck is you're playing so many earth monsters that making Asa is really easily and a really good card in today's format is Fenrir. So what's really cool is if your opponent has a Fenrir in the graveyard, you can make the Asa take your opponent's Fenrir and now you have access to that. Whether you want to link it away into a link three or just use the Fenrir as a body on your side of the field can be very, very powerful, right? So that's why I really like playing the Asa. I think it's a very powerful link two. One powerful link three is Nightmare Unicorn. Unicorn, of course, is really good. And like I said, Keystone is going to add itself back to your hand on the end phase when you combo with it. So if you were to make a Unicorn, you'll always have fodder for the Unicorn, which is really, really nice. We're playing one Boral Sword for the OTK button. Again, Axis Code is one of those things that might be a little bit better. However, to fit within the budget, Boral Sword makes a lot more sense. Very easy to make the Boral Sword. But on top of that, you already have a win con in the OTK machine in Ultimate Conductor Tyranno. So for that reason, it's just kind of an option for you that you guys can play. Fits within the budget, which is really nice. Then we're playing the one Apollo Yusa. Apollo is very powerful because in your first turn combo, you can a lot of the time end on the Apollo. And Apollo is really good with three negates, of course, because your typical combos, I'm going to be honest with you, are something like Apollo plus a Dolka plus a Nat Beast plus a Conductor, right? Which is like five, six or seven negates even. So that's so crazy. Well, seven negates plus you have like unlimited negates on the Churia Beast. Speaking of the Churia Beast, that's the last card here in the extra deck. So that's it for the extra deck here. This card, of course, being able to make it in this deck and making it so that your opponent can't activate spell cards, especially in a format where Sky Striker got engaged back to two. Koshter is really reliant on its spell cards as well. There's so many decks just reliant on its spell cards and Nat Beast is just so, so powerful. So that's it for the deck here, guys. $44, you guys can build this exact deck. If you guys, again, want to up the budget a little bit and you guys can afford it, you guys can change the Veilers to Droll and Lockbirds. You guys can play IP Mascarena here, which is really powerful, but that's the 10 to $12 card. So again, you guys can all fit this within $100 if you guys wanted to with some upgrades, but you guys can also play this pretty competitively, $44 with this build right here. And you have Ultimate Conductor Tyranno, still one of the most feared monsters in the game. If you guys haven't tried this deck out for yourselves, make sure you do. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That is building on a budget dino. $44, guys. $44 is so crazy. I don't think I've ever built anything for $44. And this is pretty competitive. Like this deck is actually pretty good. And for $44, you guys can actually compete and be successful in today's metagame. So that's honestly kind of cool if you ask me. Now, if you guys do enjoy these videos, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on the channel, deck profiles, combo videos, do replays, all that good stuff. You'll find it right here on the channel. On top of that, you guys get five shorts a week, Monday through Friday, which means you guys can get up to 10 videos a week. Five shorts are guaranteed. And then maybe Maybe you guys get even five deck profiles, combo videos, all that good stuff. So make sure you guys subscribe if you guys haven't already. So thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. I hope you guys did enjoy it. With that, thank us signing out. Peace.